So I've been seeing a lot of posts online about property assessments and people are really angry about these ones. So I haven't opened this one yet. I'm gonna open it right now and we're gonna get into some of this today. So I've been seeing stuff online with people saying they've increased a hundred or $150,000 in some cases. So I'm gonna take a look at this one here. Mine went up, <laughs> not as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Mine went up just over $30,000. Now, that being said, that's a lot lower than I was expecting in this circumstance, but the truth is it went up $178,000 last year. So this is still over $200,000 of an increase over the last two years. So if you're mad about your new property assessment, then just know you are certainly not alone as my social media has been blowing up with this over the last couple of weeks. But in this video, I'm gonna break this down a little bit further and talk about these property assessments. And I'm gonna talk about why the assessment have increased so much, how the assessments are calculated, the CAP program and how it works, and something to watch out for if you're buying a new home. So stick around until the end for that one. But just before I get into it, if you're new here, my name is Andrew Stevens and I've been a realtor in Halifax for nine and a half years. If you're interested in being educated in the Halifax real estate market, then this is the channel for you. So hit that like button and hit that subscribe button. And if you wanna book a call or a meeting with me to chat about real estate, or if you're thinking about making a move in the Halifax area, you can reach out to me anytime in the Cali link below my description at a time when it's convenient for you. So a lot of Nova Scotians are seeing crazy increases to their property assessment. And the question is why? And truthfully, I was expecting this in 2023. But remember, this is directly tied to the growth of the market. So because the market grew 25.6% in 2021, that's why this has jumped to such a big rate. And that's why I'm saying you need to brace yourself for 2024 because that data is coming from 2022. And in HRM specifically, the market grew over 16%. So I would expect an increase next year to your property assessment as well if you're in the HRM. And this is mainly because the property assessments are trailing by one year. So that means that this property assessment you got in the mail right now is your property value at the start of 2023, not at the end of 2023. So this is all the data this year. This assessment is all the data from January 1st, 2022 until the end of of 2022. And in 2022, we saw price increases of about 16 or 17%. So again, I'm really not surprised that a lot of people are seeing large increases on their property assessments. And in theory, next year should be a little bit lighter, at least in the HRM, because average sale prices in HRM last year in 2023 only went up about two and a half percent. So again, a lot lighter than the 17 or 16 we saw in the year previous in 2022. Now, in terms of how these assessments are calculated, PBSC gets their info from a lot of different areas. They have discussions with property owners. They get data from the Nova Scotia Land Registry. They look at sales and listings on the MLS. They look at building permits and income versus expenses. They see aerial and street photography. And they look at typical cost data and they do some property inspections as well. Now, a lot of you watching may be freaking out about this new assessment and thinking that your property taxes are going to go through the roof. But truthfully, for a lot of you, that will not be the case. And this is because of the CAP program. So if you qualify, this CAP program will limit the amount that your taxes can increase every single year. And it's based on the CPI in the province. Now, the eligibility to qualify for the CAP is as follows. Your home needs to be at least 50% owned by a Nova Scotia resident has to be a residential property with less than four dwelling units or a vacant resource property. For the cap, residential properties include manufactured homes, manufactured home parks, cooperative housing, and the residential or resource portions of a commercial farm. It must be occupied by the owner if the property is a condominium, and it must be owned for at least a year or ownership remained within the family. Now, something to watch out for with the cap, especially if you're buying a home, is if a home is sold, if it's not to an immediate family member, then the cap is released in the following year. And then if that new homeowner qualifies, it's put back in place the following year. So as an example, if you bought a home in June of 2023 and that property was capped, well, then that cap is going to be released for you, the new owner, unless you're an immediate family member in January of 2024. 
Now in 2024, if you meet the eligibility for the cap system, then you'll be put back on the cap in January of 2025. But in that one year, your property taxes have the ability to go through the roof, especially if the previous owner was capped for years and years and years. Because let's say you're buying a property that was on the cap and maybe that property tax bill was $3,000 at the time and then that cap is released, that could easily bring your taxes up to $4,000 or $4,500 or even $5,000 or more. So this is something you need to pay attention to if you're buying a property, especially if you're tight on funds, if you're a first time home buyer or something like that and you're a little bit tight on your monthly budget, you wanna make sure you're not slammed with an extra $2,500 a year, which is about $200 a month. It's a big difference to your monthly cost potentially, depending on the way this cap system is going to work in each and every situation. Now, in terms of which properties are capped and which ones are not capped, the following properties would not fall under the cap system. Commercial properties, new construction, non-owner occupied condominiums, properties that have been purchased from a non-family member within the last year, and properties that are majority owned by out of province residents are not eligible for the cap. And another fun fact is if you own a property that's under a company name, so I have an investment property that's in a hold co, that is not part of the cap system. So fun fact, I have that one right here and I'm gonna look at it. I just opened it up a second ago. And the difference for this rental property is $131,000. So that is a humongous increase for that particular property. And I'm gonna feel the hurt from that as an investment property owner, because it's in a hold co, I'm going to see that increase on my tax bill going forward. So my property taxes definitely just increased by quite a bit. And again, the rate of what the cap is, is based on the Nova Scotia CPI for that year. So for this year in 2024, the cap is based on 3.2%. Now, if you're unhappy with your new assessment, technically you can appeal it. And this has to be done by February 8th at midnight. But just be careful because I've heard of some situations where a Nova Scotian homeowner has appealed their property assessment. And then instead of it going down after they looked at it closer, they actually increase the assessment. So that's a real slap in the face if you do appeal it and then you get slapped in the face with a bigger assessment. Now, I would say this case is more on the rare side, but just know that that is a possibility. So if you think you're just going to say, well, I'm going to appeal it and it's either going to be the same or less, not necessarily. So just be careful and do your homework and make sure you know what you're doing before you appeal that assessment. And again, it must be done on or before February 8th at midnight. Now, one more thing I want to mention about these assessments, because I think this is something that is very misunderstood from a consumer perspective. Your property tax assessment has zero impact on the market value of your property zero impact. It has nothing to do with what your home is actually worth. This is truly just the way the city is coming up with what you're going to pay in terms of a tax bill every year. Market value is determined by what a willing buyer is willing to pay for a home and what a willing seller is willing to sell that home for. So it has nothing to do with these assessments. So again, a lower assessment technically is better because you're going to be paying a less amount of property taxes. So to me, I wish mine was zero because I'm sick and tired of paying taxes, but that's not the reality. That's not the world that we live in. Now, if you're still here watching and you got any value out of this video, all I ask is that you hit that like button and you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of my future content. And that'll help push this out to more people like you who may be interested in seeing content about the Halifax and Nova Scotia real estate market. And until next time, thank you so much for your support. I really appreciate it and have a great day.